What do insanely poor people buy that ordinary people know nothing about? Lots of school systems do free lunches for kids under 18 during the summer. When I was a kid I remember my dad taking us to get lunch at the school then go play disc golf, soccer, or do something else free and fun. It was a blast and I had no clue it was because we were poor. Dollar theaters. And sometimes they have a free afternoon evening show for kids with the purchase of a parent ticket. Many movies were seen by the three of us for four dollars with a shared popcorn and coke. My dad was amazing at making us feel rich on basically nothing. Good on him. You really realize how much your parents do for you once you get older and look back. Hope you're better off now, bud. We all are. I just hope that one day I'll be half the dad for my kids. Wash plasticware, spoons, forks, knives. I'm no longer poor and I still do this. It's obscene how much stuff we throw away. I had to move out on my own when I was 17. I had no money at all and drove an old clunker Camry. I got a flat tire to match the flat spare in the trunk. I went to the discount tire on the east side of Indianapolis, where I was living, to see if they could patch it. When they got it on the rack, they said that belts were showing around the tire in fact, all of the tires and I would have to replace all four tires. I thanked them, went outside, sat in my car and started crying. The manager came out and knocked on the window. He said that he had a set of tires that would fit my wheels that someone left when they got new tires. I told him thanks, but didn't have any money. He told me not to worry about it, and when I graduate, to come back and buy my tires from them. Gotta ask, did you buy your tires from them? Yeah, every time. In fact, my wife, son and I moved away to Brooklyn, New York. Last fall, when making our final visit home for the year to visit my wife's fam, I drove, just so I could get new tires there. They're all still really nice guys. I have been both very poor and very comfortable. A lot of very true statements already posted here, but here's what I have noticed. When you are broke, you can't plan ahead or shop sales or buy in bulk. Poor people wait to buy something until they absolutely need it, so they have to pay whatever the going price is at that moment. If 10 packs of paper towels are on sale for half price, that's great, but you can only afford one roll anyway. In this way, poor people actually pay more than others for common staple goods. My office only has a unisex bathroom so it has the facilities for men and women. Naturally there's a tampon machine, and tampons are only five cents. Once a month I'll work late, get a roll of nickels and fill up a grocery sack with tampons for my wife. I learned how to be resourceful when I was dirt poor. That skill set is still with me. Nowadays, I'm no longer poor but I could not put myself to buying something that I do not need and if I did, I feel like shit. Some people get a high from shopping. I get that shit feeling when I buy something. After selling plasma I would walk to Wendy's and eat the crackers and ketchup for dinner. You can get new car parts from the junkyard for virtually nothing, with added discounts if you remove them from the junkers yourself. I had a 12-year-old car in college and when it blew a tire, I went to the junkyard and found a decent set of tires. Bought all four for $70 which reduced my food budget to $16 for the next two weeks. Some lady in the grocery store saw me with a calculator trying to figure out how much ramen I could buy with $16 and handed me a $20. It made me cry. I'm glad I'm not poor anymore. But I'll always remember that lady. It's amazing how far you can stretch that $20 when it's all you have. Source. Have been that poor in the not-too-distant past. The first four years of my life were spent in abject poverty. As a child, I would ask my mom if we could get a candy bar. She would explain to me, at age three, that we could get the candy bar. But if we did, it meant we couldn't afford a two liter of Coca-Cola. She would phrase it like so. If you get the candy bar, it'll be gone in a few days. But if you get the Coca-Cola, we can have Coca-Cola for the whole week. Amazingly, I knew enough to understand that Coca-Cola for over a week was a better deal than two days of a candy bar. As a side effect, I was regularly told, no, when I asked for things I wanted, mostly Lego sets or He-Man toys. Around age six, my father's stake in a mineral prospecting company finally paid off. Turns out he had been putting every dime he had into it since before I was born. We went from surviving on mayonnaise sandwiches to having 2015's equivalent of $10,300 per month in income. My little sister was around two or so at this time, and she was getting everything she wanted. 
For the first six years of my life, I had learned that asking for things I wanted would always end with a no, so I never asked for anything. My parents weren't able to put it together until my grandmother got very sick and came to live with us. The whole family was out shopping, and my grandmother knew I loved Legos, but I didn't ask for a set of them. Meanwhile, my little sister had a Barbie doll and a My Little Pony in each hand. She stopped and asked me, Rathodin, you don't want the Lego set? Mommy and Daddy always tell me no, Grandma. We can't afford them. I have only a very vague memory of this. But before she died, my grandmother told me this story and said that my mom broke down in tears in the middle of the store, sobbing. My dad had a look of defeated failure on his face, according to her. Apparently, it simply never occurred to them the reason I never asked for anything was because I had always been told no. For Christmas, I got three Lego Technic sets. When I was child, Burger King ran a special kids meal where it was two mini burgers that were attached to each other like a weird conjoined burger experiment. Sometimes we would go. My dinner was 1.5 of the mini burgers. My mom's dinner was the half I didn't eat, and she would fill up on the free refills of soda. It's not the things we bought. I grew up in a level of poverty, in the entire 1980s and some of the 1990s, that modern politicians will swear to you doesn't occur in modern America. After all, we have food stamps and welfare, and anyone still poor after that is obviously just a lazy fucking drug addict bum. It's not the things we bought. We lived on powdered milk and rice and ramen, and before that, those old one-ton soup packets that I just realized don't exist anymore and government cheese. Tuna can after tuna can. Bread from the discount rack at the local bakery, about nine minutes away from growing mold. But hey, at least it was only 19 cents a loaf. It's the things we scavenged. Hauling food out of the dumpster at 7 to 11, because they threw away piles of chip bags that were a day over their expiration. Manager caught us one day. They apparently told the employees to stab a hole in each chip bag after that. NBD. We just had to sniff each bag to make sure nothing was contaminated. Checking neighbors' trash bins rescuing half a damn pizza some idiots had ordered the night before, then threw away after a handful of slices. Hauling in furniture from alleyways my littlest sibling, my sister, received a twin bed mattress that had a grotesque brown stain on it. Looked like someone had shit a gallon of wet feces onto it. No fucks given, we scrubbed that fucker with bleach over and over, and she slept on it for years. And then there were times when the welfare checks or food stamps didn't arrive, and the trash bins were not producing food. I grew up in a fairly rural area. When that happened, I know that in winter, gray squirrel tastes fucking gross. Sure, people from the south can claim that their brown and red squirrels are delicious, but I would rather eat shit out of a pig's ass than eat another bite of goddamn squirrel meat, or jackrabbit, or goddamn dandelion greens. I guess I'm just saying that it's not what, insanely poor people buy. Since they're insanely poor they can't fucking afford to buy anything. You can keep the electricity and rent paid. Or you can, nope, there is not other choice. Food? Medicine? Clothing? Furnishings? Blankets? All of this is shit you can pull out of the garbage. I was so poor once that I would go to Long John Silver's and order a water and crunchies, which used to be free, then sit there and watch the people that would dine in. It was amazing how little they ate and then they would leave without dumping their tray off in the trash. Fries, hush puppies, chicken, fish, all untouched. No, I didn't eat a piece that was bitten off of. I once saw a woman order a two-piece fish and more for her kid, that ate one hush puppy and a few fries, and then left the rest of it there. It was the best I had eaten in weeks. Glad that's behind me now. Powdered milk. I once worked in a call center, and an old lady called almost in tears that cable went up by $1.50. Her line that she repeated more than once was that she couldn't afford fresh milk and had to buy powdered milk, unless it's due to a lack of refrigeration available or some sort of allergy. Only the very poor would buy powdered over fresh milk. We drank powdered milk growing up. It was terrible. Sometimes my mom would mix a bit of cream in to make it taste better. It didn't work. Ugh. Thanks for bringing up this painful memory. I knew a guy that would go to a livestock feed store and buy antibiotics and some other meds there that were meant for farm animals when he got sick. There was another med he'd get at pet stores too. He'd just cut the pills into smaller pieces to try to guess what the proper NG amount was. 
it's apparently crazy cheap for certain meds and doesn't require a prescription or government oversight like it would at a normal pharmacy. My parents would just get cheap antibiotics over the border in Mexico. That and roach poison and some other stuff like that, that we probably don't carry in the U.S. for a good reason. Growing up my family had its moments of struggle. Our public transport system at the time had tickets which were simply hole punched with the date and month, not the year. So we'd save them and store them neatly in envelopes marked by month and concession or full fare. After a few years of saving tickets we pretty much had free train and bus travel for the next 10 years, until they changed the ticketing system to electronically stamp tickets with barcodes. Rent to own furniture. Craigslist furniture. Sent from my $30 Craigslist couch. Couches are risky, may have tenants in them. $500 flat screen becomes $2,000 when you pay by the week. What do insanely poor people buy that ordinary people know nothing about? Leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one.